I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to get an avoidant ex back. So chances are you had no idea what an avoidant attachment style was until you've gone through your breakup. Right. And as you've started learning more, obviously we talk about that a lot on our channel and mental health. You've probably thought, wow, my partner has an avoidant attachment style. I didn't even know what that was before. Right. Who did? And yeah. so Margaret's got some information here. She did some research that she wanted to talk about, um, some ideas and strategies mm -hmm. that could be helpful to you when you're trying to get an avoidant ex back because it can be challenging, right? It also can be done. Yeah. It can be done. But you have to be very sure it's what you want. That's the trick. Well, the anxiety is going to make you think, it is what I want. I'm certain of it. Right. Right? But think again. There's more to it. Right. So okay. What do you got, Margaret? Well, I like this article and I wanted to share it. Um, and here are the recommendations. In short, we would recommend the following actions to reattract an avoidant ex. First, understand what avoidant attachment is and we have a whole playlist called understanding attachment styles traumas and injuries there's right. hundreds of videos on yep. it the thought patterns behind it and your partner's needs okay mm -hmm. um, your partner would, if he's truly avoidant thinks he doesn't have any needs next Identify and work with your attachment style, which is also huge. It's very easy to just focus on the avoidant partner and forget that your anxiety is part of the package here. Okay, so identify and work on your attachment style. What are your relationship needs? And are these compatible with your partner's relationship needs? Can you genuinely accept, can you genuinely accept your partner's need for independence? Yeah. Okay, and that's a huge question. You're going to want more togetherness. He may want more time by himself. Yep. If you can live with that, go ahead. But it's not easy. Right. No, There's it's a lot of challenges that right. come with dating somebody, uh, particularly if they're very avoidant, right? Yes, absolutely. It's like a spectrum. Not everybody's going to be as avoidant. It's not set in Good stone. Good point. There's always a spectrum from severe to not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be fluid in that certain yep. you, you could do certain things that may make them feel more avoidant towards you and or they could be going through their own internal struggles that Absolutely. could make them want to be more avoidant towards yep. you or more want more closeness to you. So it's not going to be set in stone. They're going to kind of be fluid based on what they're feeling, how they're thinking, what's going on. Right. Next, you need to be direct with your intentions and personal boundaries. Game playing will push avoidance away. You need to prove to your partner that you can love and accept them exactly as they are. And that is a profundity. And um, John Gottman, our friend the psychologist, says exactly the same things. And if you talk with an anxious person who's with an avoidant, Often the focus is, is he going to change or is she going to change if it's a woman? Yep. And oftentimes they're not terribly inclined to. Um, and are you willing to accept them just the way they are because you cannot assume that they're going to change? Would you go back with that person That's right. if they were going to be the exact same way they've right. always been in the relationship? And if, if your answer is no... Then you better reconsider. Yep. You better think twice about mm -hmm. it. Because oftentimes in our heart of hearts, we really think and hope this person's going to change. Yep. Can't he see? Won't he be able to see eventually that if he doesn't hold hands with me, it devastates me? Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, all right. Understanding avoidant attachment. 
Someone who has an avoidant attachment style values independence above all. While they crave intimacy because of how they were raised, they are terrified that other people will let them down. Okay? So they've come to believe it's not worth investing because you're going to get hurt anyway. Mm -hmm. However, because we're all wired to want connection, they can't walk away from it either. Mm -hmm. The avoidant is in a pretty miserable position, I think. Yeah. Um, if you're in a relationship with a person with avoidant attachment style, you likely already know it. Um, they're the charming individual who has plenty of surface level friends, but struggles to form deeper connections. They're the lover who's good with sexual intimacy, but puts up a wall when emotions come into the equation. Baffling and inconsistent, they run hot and cold until you are left feeling confused and hurt. And those are the mixed messages we talk about. Yeah. You know, I love you, I love you, mm, I need some space. Someone who has an avoidant attachment style values independence above all. This likely stems from early trauma, where the person's primary caregiver does not meet their needs. Yep. It is an unconscious attempt to avoid pain. They hold a belief that other people are unreliable. Well, un people have been unreliable. unreliable. So they have every reason to think yeah. that, right? Yeah. Um, if, no, if you can't trust your parents, it's very difficult, very difficult to trust right. anybody. Personalities with avoidant attachment styles have completed a mental transformation that says, to fulfill my needs, I can only rely on myself. Okay? And again, as Craig says, experience has taught them that. People with avoidant attachment style maintain strict boundaries, can be emotionally cold, and have difficulties opening up to their partners or maintaining close friendships. Essentially, this is a defense mechanism and people with avoidant attachment style may completely avoid relationships altogether or keep anyone new that they meet at a distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not uncommon for them to sabotage their partnerships because they are scared the other person will let them down. They reject before they are rejected. They quit before they get fired. Mm -hmm. Okay. When she finds out how really distant I am, she won't want to be with me, mm -hmm. so I'll leave now. Understanding your own attachment style. An avoidant attachment style person is willing to maintain a relationship with someone who accepts their need for autonomy and independence. Mm -hmm. Often the pressures and responsibilities that come with being in a committed relationship are off-putting for the avoidant. Yep. That's big. Right. In other words, if they get too close to you, then they have obligations to you. And that's very scary. Yep. Therefore, creating a safe space where your partner can be themselves is crucial if you want to attract them back. All right? Now, how would you say that? You know, you can go out with your buddies X number of nights. You know, you can work on your hobby. I always think of a guy I worked with who was just a delightful guy, and he built a shed in his backyard and put his electric train set into it, and when he wanted to get away, he'd just go out and go to Europe by train. You know? <laughs> um, if you can do that sort of thing, then it might work. If it's going to make you threatened or unhappy, it's not going to work. All right? It's essential to understand your own attachment style so that you can make an educated decision on whether you can meet your partner's needs while meeting your own. And that's big too, because sometimes people think they can, but they can't, all right? It may be tempting to say, I can sacrifice some of my needs to suit another person. But in reality, this will likely breed unfulfillment and resentful on both sides. Okay, and what will happen is if you're the anxious party, even as you're wanting to give this person the space they need, your anxiety is going to show up. Yep. And uh, you have to really do work to manage that anxiety. Yes, you do. And disappointment. That's right. We had a whole cartoon about it yep. with the, in the creative healing course about right. disappointment. And it is, however, highly beneficial to be open and honest about the situation, to see whether getting back with your avoidant ex is something you really want to pursue, 
or whether it's worth finding another partner who may better suit your needs. <clears throat> and you have to think about that, all right? Because it won't work for either one of you. Opening up is not the avoidant person's strong point. So you need to ask yourself whether you are willing to adjust your own attachment and communication styles, even if your partner is not willing to reciprocate. Yep. Okay. And it comes down to really thinking about your own needs and what's going to make you happy. And will that, will they make you happy because you're going to have to sacrifice? I mean, nobody you date is going to be perfect. No. But you've got to really consider these things and not just let, you know, you want them back just because you're anxious. Yes, and you miss them terribly and yeah. so forth and so on. Sure. Communicating your intentions with your avoidant ex. You seem a little distant from me at the moment. It would mean a lot to me if you felt like you could open up when something is bothering you. Whatever you do, you must communicate your needs. Do not sacrifice your happiness for the sake of another. As paradoxical as it may seem, to attract the ex back, you need to set a list of clear boundaries and expectations and accept that there is a risk of losing them by doing so. I want to make it clear, though, that we do not want you to reach out to your ex to communicate your boundaries. No, no. I'm not recommending that. And if that's what the article is implying, no. What I would do in certain situations, you know, don't reach out to tell no. your ex, I don't want to be friends. No. But if they're trying to keep you as just a friend, then that boundary I would set by saying, I can't be friends with you. Okay? So... That's one boundary that I think that you have to set. But the other boundaries, I feel like, would come more from if the, you guys are seeing each other again, yeah. they're wanting to repair right. things right. with you, then you can mm -hmm. slowly start setting boundaries with them, but not too soon. And I do not want you guys to break no contact to say, I don't want to be friends. No, if they seem like they're trying to be friends with you, then you could say, look, I can't be friends with you. But... Setting boundaries would be something that you're going to do if you guys are trying to repair it. Yes. Not reach out to set boundaries or anything like that. No. Wonderful. Okay. And Craig makes an excellent point because it's very, very common for avoidant people to do exactly that and say, let's be friends because that way they get to keep you in their life yep. without having the obligations and the closeness of a relationship. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm glad you raised that question. Yes. It happens all the time. Yeah. I just wanted to make that clear because I don't want people to just reach no. out and start setting boundaries with them or trying to no. say that I'm setting this boundary or that boundary. They're, they're going to be like, wait, but wh why are you reaching out to me? I broke up with you. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> but this is an excellent point. And I have been telling people for ages, you need to set limits about what's the limit of your tolerance, what boundaries can you accept and not accept. And people always come back with, but what if he leaves? Well, do you really have him now? Okay? And if you're honest and if you set boundaries, it's entirely possible that he will respect you more. Yep. But that would be something that comes with them trying to repair it with you. Don't break. No, no contact. contact. Don't reach out to them no. to try and set some boundaries or something. No. Okay. Rather than making demands or expressing what makes you upset, it's more conducive to demonstrate what you would prefer and then give the other person the space to try to please you. Before discussing each need, ask yourself whether it's important and something your ex can do something about or whether your attachment style has been triggered. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is if you've begun to have contact and get back together, right? Yep. Okay. You want to create a safe, open line of communication between you and your ex. Mm -hmm. That means you'll want to be calm, collected, consistent, and logical. Mm -hmm. Do not allow your ex to dump on you emotionally. Boundaries are a must, and you set those. You are not your ex's therapist, and it is not your job to fix them. 
but you can offer your support and build a bond between the pair of you that's built on trust, understanding, and honesty. Yeah. But to me, the biggest boundary you're setting at this point is I'm not going to be friends with you. Absolutely right. Yep. Then get to work. Did you feel like your life was stagnating? Push towards your goals or pick up a new hobby. Did you depend on your partner to refuel you emotionally? Spend some time nurturing your friendships. Take positive action to upgrade your life. Doing that is going to make you more attractive to your ex. Absolutely. That's yep. what we say all the time. Yep. <laughs> and it's going to strengthen your most important relationship. That is the one you have with yourself. Yeah. Okay. So pursue your own interests. That would take a little bit of pressure off of an avoidant, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Evolving makes us feel good about ourselves. And this radiates to the outside world from within. Show your ex that you are developing into a better person and communicate it in such a way that they can't deny you are more emotionally stable, energizing, and happy in yourself. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds like whoever wrote the article is a fan of our channel. It certainly does. <laughs> I agree with this person. All right. And go with the flow. And Craig, it's what you always say. You don't want to start introducing all of this too soon. Yeah. If you manage to get back and to be having contact, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Knowing why your ex behave, behaves the way he or she does is an excellent start to rekindling your relationship. Knowing both of your attachment styles can act as a guide in how to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. You may have to come to accept that sometimes your words and actions will call, cause your avoidant partner to pull away. But the upside is that you don't have to take this personally. Okay? And inevitably, an anxious person does take it personally. Mm -hmm. It's important to know how avoidants behave, and you can say, he's being avoidant, it comes from his childhood, it's not my fault. Okay? The most important takeaways from this article is that you and your partner need to find a rhythm that works for you. No two people are the same, and while others may find it challenging to be in a relationship with someone who does not like to get too close, you might find the intimacy levels between you and your partner perfect for you. And that's the truth. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. It is good stuff. And, you know, I was saying to Craig earlier today, oftentimes I do four sessions in a day, and many times at least three of them have to do with an avoidant, you know? Yeah. And an anxious person. We don't want to rule you out either. Um, but let's remember Gottman. You have to be able to love somebody exactly the way they are or and, and don't count on them changing. Yep. Yeah. And... If you want to repair it or try and repair it or at least see if you can do it and have another shot at things, mm -hmm. it's completely understandable. Yep. We're here to help with that. Uh, just go to my website, askcraig.net, to sign up for the coaching option. That may work best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Margaret is available for Skype coaching. And we can help with that. Absolutely. Uh, yes, we can help you with your anxiety and, and help you slow down a little bit and remind you that... Everything he does is not about you. Yeah. Okay. Just so sign up if you're interested. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, Click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.